morning. Good morning. 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 First of all, I'd like to say it's an uh, honor to be here. Uh, and I, I really um, uh, want to say thanks to Monica and Jack for uh, trusting me with, uh, with helping you guys in your meeting. Uh, Monica and Jack, I consider as friends. Monica is like a big sister uh, to me. And Jack is like a brother. So, you know, the beautiful part about this business is that you get to meet very good friends uh, that, you know, you don't have anything to gain from. So you can trust me because I don't have anything to gain from. <laughs> the Philippines actually is not a better country than uh, Malaysia. Uh, even if you go through the direct selling statistics, Malaysia is the top 10 in network marketing in terms of the largest markets in the world. Why? I don't know. Right? Because <laughs> Malaysians really are gifted. Right? The people are high quality, the salaries are better. But in the Philippines, as you know, a college graduate would probably earn 300 US dollars a month in salary. And a galvanic spa in the Philippines is $500. And so our prices in the Philippines are far higher than the United States, a first world country. And in the Philippines, it's a third world country. So I just want to share with you that our uh, success should let you know and console you that you are in a far better position than we are. That's it. Yes. Right? Um, you look around you and all the economies in the whole Asia is better than the Philippines. Even Vietnam has a better economy than the Philippines. And so that also tells you uh, that you know we have to fight harder in order to create our success than here. Right? And so if we can make it, I'm sure you guys all can. Yes, it is. Yes. You know, in fact, if I wanted to build a global business, I probably would want to build it in Malaysia because everybody is trilingual. You can speak Malay, you can speak Chinese, you can speak English very well, right? So I think that in the future, Malaysia really has a huge potential for, you know, when you are with New Skin, one of the reasons why I chose New Skin was because New Skin was seamless. You know, I, I come from a very different perspective because before I joined New Skin, I intended to open my own company. I wasn't really interested in joining. I was in Canada, I was looking around at every company. In fact, my upline thought uh, when they first met me that I was a spy. <laughs> <laughs> but what it was that I was really looking uh, at different companies, trying to look at the compensation plan, trying to look at what's well, what works, because I, I came from a uh, a mindset of being a devil's advocate, to be very negative to this industry, to uh, looking at opening my own company when I found out that it was good, I realized why should I join one instead of just own one, right? It's a very Chinese way of thinking, isn't it? And so uh, that's how I stumbled upon New Skin. And so I looked at New Skin and I saw that, hey, this is a superior company. It is a great, uh, it, it makes the compensation plan make sense. You see, you usually you can make very good decisions when your emotions are detached. You understand? Yes. Yeah, when you are having a hard time, that's not the time to decide. Yes, it is. Yes. How, how many of you know that, how many of you are married? And how many of you have had a hard time in your marriage? <laughs> <laughs> and how many of you know that you don't make decisions when you're crying? When you're married, there are times when you will have to cry, isn't it? <laughs> right? And you don't make those decisions at that time. Otherwise, divorce would be the most popular activity in the whole world. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Right? So, to make logical decisions, sometimes it's good when you're detached. I was fortunate to have the ability to do that when I was in Canada because they tried, they, they kept trying to recruit me and I would attend everything because I was born, but then I have a convenient excuse. I could say, well, I'm not a Canadian citizen, I couldn't join, mm -hmm. and so this would have to wait until five years after when I go back to the Philippines or something like that. Right? So, I didn't really, um, I had a convenient excuse, but I was actually looking at it. And that's how I saw, I uh, came across uh, New Skin. And so uh, one thing that attracted me was that New Skin was uh, one of the first, uh, how to say, uh, you know, for me, passive income is a big promise. Don't you think so? You know, to, to understand the concept of permanent income, it's really big. It's almost too good to be true. And for it to be delivered, I need to make sure that this company can deliver. And in my list, there's only two or three companies that can do that. And out of the two or three companies, I saw that New Skin was the only one that made sense. And so there was a truly global compensation that was really seamless. I mean, you see Amway, they're a global company, but their compensation plan is not seamless. You, you, you would have to uh, you know, do everything from the ground up in every country that you go into. Right? I saw that. Uh, forever Living is the same thing. You know, if, you're not, uh, if you've not reached, let's say, Ruby Executive in Forever Living, 
uh, you will be able to gain from uh, from expanding overseas, or you can, right? And uh, the overseas volume does not count. But nowadays, we are in the age of social media. And so you can actually tap China on your computer. You can actually tap, tap, tap anywhere in the world with your computer. I have a blue diamond uh, who is living overseas in a, in a market that New Skin is not even open yet, but she, she was recruited in the Philippines. And so what she did was she just used social media to tap into the markets that are New Skin are open already. And just using FaceTime and Skype, she could become a blue diamond. Right? And so you couldn't do that uh, with other companies because they don't have a global presence. Right? So new skin is really uh, really good that way because that global global uh, platform, Malaysians are really poised to uh, really uh, you know get the biggest uh, market because you're looking at the whole world, you're not just looking at Malaysia. Is it? Right? And so you guys are really fortunate, you're in a very good position right now. The only question is whether you have what it takes to reach the top. Let me just uh, start by saying, you know, a lot of people told me that, you know, that, my, that business is, doesn't work. And many people I know joined that kind of business and they did not succeed. And then that is a really funny uh, thing to say because it can only come from people who have never been in business. Because if you've, always, if you've been in business, you know that the uh, success rate for business over the five year period only, you're talking about less than 5%. Right, less than five percent of the businesses that open really succeed, right? But even in life, we don't have to look at businesses. You know, ninety something percent of the people in this world, when they reach sixty-five, will never be able to take care of themselves. They'll have to depend on their relatives, or they will be dead, or they will be dead broke at sixty-five. Yes, either because they're unhealthy, or number two, they did not prepare well, or it's not enough. Because you know, you could prepare as a corporate person, but when cancer strikes you, I tell you, what you're going to spend there is more than. If you need a new kidney, I tell you, you're going to spend a lot, and it's going to draw, you know, you drain all your savings. Yeah. Uh, very few people get pension these days. There's, the, the government pension is ridiculous. It's very small. It's not enough for you, uh, isn't it? And so, really, the statistics. To say that most people are not going to make it in life, it's a given. Why even say that when you know it already? It's common sense. Everybody knows that. That when you have to win, when you have to succeed, you have to fight. That's yes. Freedom has never been free. Who said that? The Bible. You don't work, you don't eat. You can be better than God. And so New Skin is not better than God. <laughs> New Skin is just a platform. It's static. It's the most consistent, dependable thing. You deliver, they beg. You want the product, it's there. They're on time, right? The commission is always on time, isn't it? <coughs> Whatever new skin promise you, they deliver. <coughs> you only have the right to complain, we only have the right to complain <coughs> when they do not deliver on the promise. But the fact that in 35 years, you know, I, I spoke to one of the top people in new skin, and he told me the first time he received a $100,000 check, he ran to the bank and cashed it right away because he was afraid that New Skin made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and they would, they would probably withdraw the check because it's too big of a check, right? But it's been 35 years they've been receiving those checks month after month on time on the dot. You know, so it's, 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 it's very predictable. New Skin is the most predictable thing. What is not predictable is our performance. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Right? So, uh, what is not predictable is your government. <laughs> what is not predictable is your boss, because you're not in control of your boss. Right? One day they tell you you're going to be promoted, the next day they're, you're not really promoted, they promoted their sister. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Yes. And so the new skin is different. You know, it's fair game. Right? Uh, it's all a matter of performance. And probably that's what attracted me to this business as well. You see, very few things in life you could really say is fair. You know, in business, in the Philippines, most Chinese people have a business. We don't like work. Um, I guess I was telling a friend why that is so. I said the more developed the country is, seems the more spoiled the, uh, the people are, right? Uh, you know, because in the Philippines there is no welfare, there is no, you know, and the government is not as good, so the Chinese people have to be very driven. And the same way you will notice that uh, when you guys have parents that are not very rich, most of you are driven. Or let's talk about your parents. When they came here to Malaysia, they had nothing. They had to fight for it. So they were the most driven group. 
and they all became rich. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But the children of these rich people, because they showered with everything, and they have good education, they have good everything, they don't have to fight as much. And in the back of their mind, they think, well, even if I don't do anything, daddy's money is there. And what happens? You raise a whole bunch of uh, the millennials are what they call the spoiled bunch. These are the people who are the most skilled, most educated, uh, most sharp people, but unfortunately, they are not driven. And that's why they say that this group of people are not going to be the ones that are going to be rich. But it's their children that are going to suffer for their lack of drive, and these children will be the one that's driven, right? And so, in the same way in the Philippines, I guess, because the Chinese don't have that kind of security, we need to fight. And so business has always been the way to go. But nowadays, to do business in the Philippines, you need not only capital. First of all, if you don't even have, let's say, Malaysian ringgit, uh, one million uh, ringgit, please don't even do business, because you don't have the uh, cash flow. You know, when, you, when I want to supply a supermarket, uh, I don't you know, give to you and you pay me. That's, that's not the situation. If there are 10 branches, you have to supply the 10 branches or they don't buy from you. And then you have to give them a consignment for 90 days. But you have to pay your employees, etc., and all that. You know? And they limit your profit. You, you know what I'm saying? So you have a lot to lose. They have nothing to lose. Plus, they will turn around your money and use your money for other Right? And so, if you don't have cash flow, that's not even fault. If you don't have capital, so right there, that is something. That means no matter how good you are, sorry, you don't have the cash flow, you probably fall flat on your face. If you're into construction, you construct, but sometimes there are, you know, you're not going to be paid right away by the, uh, the little people. And so after you construct already, or you, you've been successful as a contractor for two years, then you construct one building, one floor, that is of a building, and then you, 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 you paid for it first. Then the owner started to be smart and never paid you. Just that one moment, you can lose everything. You understand what I'm trying to say? That is normal business, yes? And the second thing is this. If you don't have connections, let's not even talk. You see, if I was to buy anything in the Philippines, I don't have to cut out money. My money is only to, to create store for my overhead, etc. But the goods, usually Chinese to Chinese, we can trade millions with our one word. But if you're not born rich, and of course the Chinese people are smart, they, they're like a bank. The bank does not lend you money if you don't have money. <laughs> they only lend you money because you can pay. Yes, it is. Yes. And so if I talk to another Chinese, they know that our family is okay, that's why they lend you. But because of that, we have a lack of, we can, we can, we can turn around millions and millions worth when you are starting from the ground. How can you compete? So really, there is no other business like New Skin that's all fair. So in New Skin, the only thing that you have to put on the table is your skills and your hard work. And if that's not enough for you, business is not for you. Go back to work. I'm sorry, I have to say it this way because I'm as honest as they, as they get. I am like that my down lines, right? That's why when I do this kind of training in the Philippines, I always tell them, uh, don't, don't, don't bring your new down lines in. Because I train different than I'm doing training. I'm upfront, I'm honest, because I don't want unrealistic expectations. You understand? Yes. Knowing that even I had to go through the same things that we have to do. And that's why uh, when I came to New Skin, I came with a very different mindset. So the mindset that you came in has to be right. If you come into school thinking, oh, let me try, I'll see if I can survive, the minute you touch calculus, you quit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In my case, it's not calculus, it's history. I hate history. I hate statistics, so I will quit at that point. But if you come to the mindset that says, I better make it, or I'm dead. You know, my parents are going to kill me. If I don't graduate, I'm going to be the only person in my, my family that doesn't graduate, right? Then you come with this mindset, sure you graduate. Yes, yes. yes. And so when I came into New Skin, I came in with the concept that I will make that $40,000 a month passive income, and it's a given. That means to say, it's like I took a course. It's understood along the way there's going to be some challenges, but I will complete the course. There's no such thing that you can earn even $10,000 passive income, and you didn't have to work. When were you born? <laughs> you know, because I, I see a lot of people are like babies. A little bit of challenge, somebody says no to them, oh my gosh, they emote. 
you become so emotional about it, you know what I mean? You're not a dramatic actress here. You can quit, but when you quit, you go back to that boring life in the first place that you were fighting to get out of. Quitters, it doesn't mean that you stop the pain. You forget of what day you will take and you will gain more. Life is like this. Either you pay now or you pay later. But when you pay now, life is easy next time. If you pay later, you pay a lot more. Sure, sure. Sure. They say that pain is very temporary. That's why when I was a kid and I do some mistake, I'd rather my parents fight me. You know why? It's just once. But the worst thing about my mom is not the spanking. We're not afraid of the spanking. This. <laughs> it doesn't stop. And it repeat like a broken record. You know what I'm trying to say? <coughs> so I, I can imagine that when I have children, maybe my children will still hear the same news, you know, your father, blah, 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 blah. Because she's like a broken record. This is the worst part, isn't it? In the same way, don't be afraid of pain. Pain is very temporary. You must be afraid of your breath. Yes. Because you only have one life to live. Yes. Right? Everybody has one life to live. Whether you be successful, you be rich, you be poor, you use the same one life. Yes, please. Yes. Decide now before you go there. Because people that don't think that they, have you heard about the saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Because the way that life is created, by default you fail. It means you don't fight, you don't do anything, you fail. That's what it is. Yes, it is. Because prices are going to keep going up. You have more and more expenses. You're aging, right? Your energy level is going to go down. And so when you don't fight, you automatically you know, you're going to keep fail, right? And so it's like that. So decide now what you want to do in your life. Decide also, new skin is just a great platform. God is good to you when you pray for an opportunity to maybe you still came to your life. <laughs> but God is not going to feed you. You know, how many of you watch Evan on Monday? And you know, in this movie, you know, the wife was crying and saying, how come my husband had to build that art, blah, 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 you know, you know, and then, then supposedly God appeared beside her. And she said, when you pray for patience, do you think God will just give it to you? Or will God give you the opportunity to develop patience? When you pray for courage, do you think God will just give it to you? The same way when you pray for opportunity and a better life, do you think God will just give it to you? Unless He wants to bring up children that are useless, right? He's going to do it. He's not going to do it. You have to fight for treasure, right? Now, uh, on to the training, uh, and it's just, you know, coming with a different mindset. So when I come here to a training like this, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm coming in to learn because I'm going to get it no matter what. And, and I guess if you come into this business with that kind of mindset, then you will appreciate all the trainings that you see because it's just one way for you to get more information. And that's the beauty of this business, right? There's no, you know, how many of you have been to uh, university? Everybody, right? Yeah. What if I was your professor? And uh, my, the professor says this, guys, there is a very special condition in my class. And that condition is this. Cheating is allowed. <laughs> How many of you are confident you can pass? I tell you what, if that condition is there and you're still not confident you can pass, there's something really wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yes. There's really something really wrong. Yeah? <laughs> so can you see the, the... Okay, let me share with you a little bit of my background. And so I don't know if maybe some of you might be thinking right now, I don't know if this business is meant to be. Am I good for this? Am I cut out for this? Because a lot of people, you know, those trainers, those books, they always say, do what you're passionate about so you never have to work a day in your life. That's bullshit. You know why? Because those people writing the books are not successful. They are successful by writing a book that you want to read. But if you're Chinese, you know that. That there's no such thing. Successful people are passionate about whatever they do. It's not that they do their hobby. What if your hobby is singing, but nobody wants to get you? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? How can you make money from it? Isn't it? Whatever passion you have, you have to find. You're Chinese, you know that. Your passion is traveling, sorry, you have to pay still. You can't make money from traveling, right? Right? I mean, if, you, if your hobby is singing, sometimes you have to pay for it for people to come to your concert. <laughs> okay. So my, my family is mostly entrepreneurs. 
So what it means is um, we know that we are used to being the boss. I was first called the boss when I was in high school. Okay, so high school first year, they call me sir already, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and because my father died when I was a young age, um, and we had to work. So even at high school first year, I already had a division that I had to take care of. Um, uh, we have a department store business, and so my division was toys. Mm -hmm. That was easy. So I love toys, right? So that was my department before. Then I move up to all the novelty items and the chocolate section was mine and then the men's room. The men's room is so easy, right? You just buy the same old colors, long sleeve, short sleeve, it's the same thing, right? So I could not go wrong. So those were, so in the beginning, we already had responsibilities. So there was no space for us to think, oh, but I'm not ready, oh, but I'm still so young, blah, blah, blah. We never have those kind of things because our mom told us that you don't have that kind of privilege because your father died, every one of us needs to grow faster, right? My hometown is the kidnapping camp. You know the president of one? That's my mayor. Oh. That's my mayor. And uh, I know you get a lot of press, uh, bad press and all that. Let me tell you the real story. Before he came in, the police was involved in kidnapping. The Muslims were very active in the Muslim pirates. Mostly pirates and also they were doing kidnapping and they were going to all the businesses to extort money. It means if you don't pay protection money, they will come after you, they bomb you and stuff like that. <laughs> and then people were dying every day, right? Even churches were being bombed. And the communist was recruiting the people and also causing all the problems and also extorting tax. And if you don't pay the tax, they will. And if you're poor and you're, uh, you, you have a boy, uh, you have a son, they will recruit your son. If you don't come, they kill you. So it's, it's that kind of a situation. So people were dying left and right until this mayor came. Mm -hmm. So I had a I had a bodyguard before. So kidnapping was uh, very bad. We have a visible business. We have a department store that was known. And so um, my parents have always told me, you know what? Uh, don't trust anybody. Don't talk to strangers. This is my condition since I was born. You think this patient is going to be a single person? <laughs> and can you imagine the kind of mindset I had? Don't talk to strangers, everybody who wants something from you, suspect everybody. You know, this is, I grew up to be a very suspicious person, right, because of this. So actually when that mayor came, actually, um, okay, yes, people did die. And did he really uh, have a squad that killed people? Off the record, yes, because our bodyguard, one of our bodyguards was one of these guys. But it was the bad guys that he was killing. And that's the reason why he never lost an election. In fact, the Chinese, every Chinese businessman in the city would be willing to give because they were recipients of the peace, of the protection, right? Uh, it, suddenly, the, my, my hometown would be very peaceful, you know, nobody would pick your phone. You know, it's more scary in Kenya. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people can disappear and die, and then the news is blocked out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for sure. But in, in, in my hometown, you can't do that. You know, people are afraid to even snatch your phone because of what is created. Right? So, why was the kidnapping camp? So, so, when people say, oh, maybe it's natural for you because you like to talk to people, no, not really. Before, I only talk to people if you're at the same level. Let's say your family is Chinese, you're also rich. Okay, we talk. We're friends. <laughs> Your family is poor, I say hello, I don't do business with you. We don't, we don't communicate because you might want something from me. This is a big thing. So how, how, how can that kind of a person succeed in this business? Right? So I started helping my family at 13 years old. I went to Canada from 1991 to 95. That's where I went for college. Which means to say, I didn't have the privilege, just like some people that you have college friends and you join the sorority, fraternity, I never did that because I was in Canada. Most of the people in Canada were transients. They went to all different countries, right? And so I never had the natural network like, that, like some of you, right? So the only people I knew were from my high school or my elementary. So I was the head of a purchasing department in uh, uh, 96 to 99, which means I was the purchaser. You know, when you're the purchaser, you have a very privileged position. <coughs> Because every supplier wants to please you. They try to bribe, they try to give you gifts, <laughs> they try to give you all these cakes. So, you know, in Christmas time, I never have to buy gifts, I just have to recite. <laughs> <laughs> they give you a fruit cake. I don't know 
why people make fruit cake? Nobody likes fruit cake. So the, the rumor is there's only one fruit cake made in the whole world that someone just pass it around one by one. <laughs> because nobody wants it, so pass it to you, pass it, pass it to someone else. You know, so fruit cakes, wines, I don't even drink wine, but there's so many of them, I just give it away. So that's my situation. So how can I now go into marketing? You know, when you're in marketing, you're too nice to people, isn't it? But I'm used to be the one, please. I'm used to be the one approving or disapproving. So how can I be successful in sales or marketing? Does it make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So, so I, I want to answer those queries by asking you some trivia questions that uh, would require introspective thinking. I want you to think because uh, uh, what I'm going to say to you, I'm not intending to convince you. You take it, you don't take it, it's okay, it's coming from my truth. Right? So I don't, I don't, I don't, I find those.